We'll be checking out the uh, latest Dragonflight Legacy cinematic. This one looks like it's going to involve Deathwing. At least I think that's Deathwing. That's on the thumbnail right there. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. And uh, do remember that if you want me to react to something, you can always go to Discord. There is a room there called Reaction Randy, where you can just uh, go in there, post links and stuff. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's like a link in the description of every video that I post on here. So you can just go in there and uh, post anything that you'd like me to check out. And if I think it's cool, I'll check it out. But anyways, we're starting today with Dragonflight Legacies, Chapter 2. What is your name, child? Emberthal, a commander of the Drakthir. Oh, it straight up continues on from the, the last one. That's cool. You know of us. You are a race of fierce warriors, unlike anything Azeroth has seen in many an age. Excuse me, they're not warriors, they're casters. Okay, I, I, sh I should stop pausing. I'll, I'll do a pausing thing uh, later after what we watch the What is child? Emberthal, a commander of the Drakthir. You know of us. You are a race of fierce warriors, unlike anything Azeroth has seen in many an age. In time, you may become as mighty as we once were. Once? What happened? The desire for power carries peril. We were blind to the darkness in our midst. Behold, the Dragon Isle. In the time after our ascension, we Aspects sought to create a beacon of hope for all the world. Beautiful. Nartharian, my general. Indeed, we all had our roles to play. Guided by Alex Straza, our conscience, our heart, we all became as close as clutchmates, or so it seemed. For we could not hear the whispers of corruption that tempted one of our own. When demons invaded our world, we Aspects went forth to protect it as we always had. Not knowing whether we would ever again See the shores of home. Our brother Naltharion led our defense against the invaders. But for the first time, we found our strength inadequate. And we grew desperate. So when Naltharion assured us that with our help, he could forge a weapon to win the war. We placed our trust in him. And we renewed our battle against the demons, only to have Naltharion, who now took the name Deathwing, turn on his own kind. see this betrayal, for we simply did not want to believe. Even after all this time, the pain of his treachery is far worse than the scars he left us with. That is not the leader I remember. How do I know it was not you who provoked him? You missed much during your confinement, but the sands of time Reveal all truths, child, even bitter ones. Trust your eyes. When the champions of Azeroth faced Deathwing for the last time, he was so consumed by madness that he could not imagine 
what we would sacrifice to stop him. That the weapon we had helped him forge would become the means of his destruction. Was there no other way? Deathwing would have destroyed this world. To stop him, we Aspects relinquished our power, our immortality, our guardianship of Azeroth itself. A fair trade, I believe. You want something from me, don't you? It is my gift and my burden to travel the pathways of time. But there is one crucial moment that has long remained hidden from me. And only you can lead me there. That means that Nosdormu, I'm assuming Nosdormu is probably looking to see the moment where he gets transformed into whatever the evil entity is called, like his uh, infinite dragonflight version, which is like a big deal in this expansion. Now, a very interesting thing that I've noticed from the legacy cinematics is that if you pay attention to it in the previous legacy cinematic, he takes you to Northrend. So it's kind of like giving you a little bit of uh, Wrath of the Lich King vibes, even though it doesn't directly address Wrath of the Lich King. It does kind of, you know, it shows you Galakrond and Northrend. Now, this could just be a coincidence, but if you think about it, this one now talks about Naltharion, uh, ex it, um, it establishes him as the one who created the Evokers for people that weren't already aware of this. Yes, no, that, at least I think that that's, it's Neltar Neltharion who creates uh, the Evokers. But not just that, in a way, this tells you, a yeah, Morazon, this tells you a little bit of the story of Cataclysm. Now, this is very interesting to me because I've, I've said, uh, even on my last video that I did where I talked about the Shadowlands and whatnot and how I, I don't actually think that Content-wise, Shadowlands was terrible. Like, yes, there was a massive drought and all of that, but the biggest problem was obviously all of the different systems that they put in place to get you to engage with the game on a long term. All of the fucking time-getting systems and all of the fucking conduit systems and all of this other bullshit that just kept you running circles around the game for no real reason. And how, in my opinion, if none of those things were in place, even though the story of Shadowlands is complete dog shit the actual content could have been fun if you didn't have all of those stupid, ridiculous systems in place that kept fun away from you. Like, these are literally systems designed to keep fun away from you. But anyways, one of the things that I said in that video is that one of Blizzard's biggest hurdles right now with World of Warcraft is getting new players. Because new players are dropped into the game and it's, 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 it's terrible. It's a terrible experience because you basically, you just get in there, it's like, oh, what? I don't even think they let you pick an expansion, right? If you're a brand new account, you have to go into BFA. Uh, I don't know if that is still the case or not, because you go into Exile's Reach, and then from there, I don't know if you have to go into BFA or if you can go do Chromie Time. Again, brand new account, not existing players. I know that existing players, if you have an account, you create a new character, you can choose to go to Chromie Time and level up a character through Chromie Time and just pick whatever expansion you want. And one of the biggest problems is that in order to secure players, like, yes, content is king and all of this stuff, but a good story, I feel, is kind of, like, essential. Because, like, for instance, one of the reasons I'm so hooked on 14 is because the story is so good that I always want to see what happens next. That's how good the story of 14 is. Whereas in World of Warcraft, the story hasn't really been good for ages, so it's, like, it's very easy for me to be like, ah, whatever, don't feel like playing it, <laughs> fuck it. I don't even care about the story, so it's whatever. Especially during Shadowlands. Story in Shadowlands is completely fucking atrocious. And one of the things that I think that Blizzard should try to do is to like create this best of 
is which is an experience for a new player where they go through like the best moments of each expansion. And in a way, considering the first Legacies thing has mentions of Northrend, the second Legacies thing has mentions of Cataclysm, could it be that they're actually setting it up in a way where if you are a new player and you jump into Dragonflight, you will be able to relive some of the key moments of Azeroth. Maybe that's just like hopium, copium, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But I think that that would be a very, very, very good thing uh, for the game, basically. Emberthal, a commander of the Drakthir. Wormrest Temple was their HQ, wasn't it? Yes. Mord will. I tried the game back in February. It's the most new player unfriendly experience I've ever seen. Yeah, it's terrible. It's completely terrible. Like mo most of, it's very hard to actually get a new player to understand World of Warcraft by playing the game, which is really stupid. Unlike that that's something that they definitely need to address and they need to fix. In time, you may become as mighty as we once were. In time, the evokers may become as mighty as the dragon aspects once were. That's interesting. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna watch it again. Just like take a couple of uh, a couple of pauses here. Blind to the darkness in our midst, Meltharion. Hildebrand is the best story I've ever experienced in any media. That's not what I said. I said Final Fantasy XIV, not Hildebrand. Hildebrand's pretty good though. Behold. Grabbing a condensed version of the story and making an MSQ out of that would be appreciated. That's literally what I said in my video. I wish they'd do that. But again, like I said, you know, there there is a chance, considering the way that these cinematics are going, that Blizzard could kind of potentially do that. Who knows? The Dragon Isles. In the time after our ascension, we aspects sought to create a beacon of hope for all the world. Beautiful. Notharian, my general. Indeed, we all had our roles to play. Guided by Alex Straza. Guided by Alex Straza, de facto leader, which is why she's like the. Who's who's this one? This one is this Yasera? I forget. This is Yasera, right? The green one. Blue ones, Caligos, Osdormu, Alexstrasza, Maltharion. Ysera Plus. <laughs> our conscience, our heart. We all became as close as clutchmates, or so it seemed. For we could not hear the whispers of corruption that tempted one of our own. When demons invaded our world, we aspects went forth to protect it as we always had. Not knowing whether we would ever again see the shores of home. Our brother Maltharion led our defense against the invaders. But for the first time, we found our strength inadequate and we grew desperate so when Neltharion assured us that with our help he could forge a weapon to win the war we placed our trust in him and we renewed our battle against the demons only to have Neltharion who now took the name Deathwing turn on his own kind. We could not foresee this betrayal, for we simply did not want to believe. Even after all this time, the pain of his treachery is far worse than the scars he left us with. That is not... I mean, treachery slash corruption, because he was being whispered to by the old gods, right? If I remember correctly. The leader I remember. How do I know it was not you who provoked him? You missed much during your confinement. But the sands of time 
Reveal all truths, child. Even bitter ones. Trust your eyes. When the champions of Azeroth faced Deathwing for the last time. I heard that this raid was really good. How you got to beat on tentacles. He was so consumed by madness. That he could and there's Thrall. What we would Thrall's balls. <laughs> to stop. This was this was when Thrall was going through his like enlightened, attuned to the elements phase. Him. That the weapon we had helped him forge would become the means of his destruction. The means of his destruction. Yung. My laser beams. I never did this raid, by the way. I wasn't really playing the game back then. Was there no other way? Deathwing would have destroyed this world. To stop him, we Aspects relinquished our power. Our immortality. Our guardianship of Azeroth itself. A fair trade, I believe. You want something from me, don't you? Of course. It is my gift and my burden to travel the pathways of time. But there is one crucial moment that has long remained hidden from me. And only you can lead me there. Now, the thing that I'm wondering is why the Zemberth... Again, this is assuming that the crucial moment is when he transforms into Morazond or whatever it's called. I'm just wondering if... Um, why is Emberthal the one who can show him that? Yeah, it's a pretty good cinematic. Like I said, I'm hoping that they keep this theme of like showing the, the stories of... At least talk about the different expansions, kind of. You know, because like, here's Northrend, here's where... And, you know, maybe tell the story of World of Warcraft from the eyes of the dragons for new players, because like I said, that is an essential thing for World of Warcraft to survive right now, is to be able to pull in new players and actually get them hooked on the game, because it's doing a piss poor job of doing that right now, in my opinion. But yeah. The trailer's hype had confirmed a lot. There should be three, four more. Yeah, but it's I think it's only one more, right? Isn't it going to be like three? It's like three chapters usually. Uh, I mean, we can see... What are they called? The the Warbringers? How many Warbringers are there? <sighs> Almost sneezed. Uh, Warbringers Jaina. Uh, Warbringers Sylvana. Warbringers Jara. And that's it. It's three of them. Yeah, Warbringers, Jana, Sylvana, uh, Sylvana, Sylvanas, and Jaina. Yep, yep. But anyways, that's my thoughts on that.